welcome every online and present here in the room uh, to our cybersecurity state of business presentation uh, being conducted by Clearwinds Technologies. Uh, my name is Mike Shrub. I'm an advisor here at Sterling Seacrest Pritchard. Um, everybody, I'm sure, knows who we are and what we do, but um, one of our principles is to try and be advisors and consultants and bring value to the table um, and be more than than just um, renewing policies. And the, one of the ways we do that is through education. And uh, nothing is, is few things are, are more pressing today than cybersecurity. So we're, we're just very thankful to have clear wins um, here today to go over some case studies, some incidents, um, that they have been privy to and some solutions that that they've helped clients and and people um, deal with cyber attacks. So um, Stan and and his crew have been here a number of times and have done a few presentations for us, and all of them super engaging and informative. And so uh, just very much thank the Clearwinds team for taking the time and helping us deliver on our promise to our clients of providing education. Um, so. With that, I'm just going to turn it over to the experts to Stan and his team. So thank you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name is Stan Sargent, and I am uh, the uh, president of Clearwinds Technologies. And uh, you'll be hearing from me and uh, Mike Gray. Mike Gray, he is um, a, uh, a security professional, um, a CISSP, if y'all are familiar with that term, but uh, the certification that is very um at really really top of the top of the of the uh, food chain on security professionals so uh uh he does a lot to uh, get that and um uh is uh quite quite an expert in that area so um and then uh we do have a couple of other guys in here david harris um he is our uh good morning so uh so he is our uh, georgia rep um here and then uh clay fuquay um he's been out here quite a few times and he is uh in alabama so um anyway i appreciate you guys having us uh uh mike and uh anyway so uh we'll, we'll get going we'll get going so um let's see make sure i'm going the right way okay yeah i'm, I'm, I'm going both ways is it on i might be let's see. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Now I'm getting a blue light. Oh, yeah, I'm fine with the mask. Okay. <laughs> That'll work too. No, that's okay. Okay. So, uh, y'all may never have seen this. You may have. I don't know. But uh, you may come into your uh, office and uh, boot up your computer and you get this message. Um, this is not a good sign um, if you see this. <laughs> uh, this is. Uh, uh, a ransomware that we've seen and uh, and it came up with this message on the screen. Ransomware doesn't always show up this way. Um, it can show up many ways. Uh, they could just put a, a file in, in a in a folder somewhere and you got to go find it. You know, everything will be encrypted except for that one file. And that's, you know, they, they're making it a little easier on everybody and uh, putting it right up there. It's like, hey, if you pay us this much uh, Bitcoin, then, um, hey, we will will you know unencrypt your data for you um so this is uh just a, a good example of something that you might see and uh we're going to go through quite a few examples as we go through here um but uh and mike's going to kind of uh, give you all the details behind that so i'm going to turn it over to mike all right thank you stan yeah so as we see here there's several issues um organizations must combat or try to identify to help them prevent from uh, seeing these types of messages. And um, we see in the landscape today as the technology is just exploding rapidly is that the attack service is growing. I mean, it used to be um, servers primarily. Now it's it's gotten to the end, right? so there's these IOTs, there's these, I mean, you got IOTs, you got all, you know, for your HVAC rooms, temperatures, anything. It's the wireless is exploding. The whole environment, the landscape's just growing exponentially. Well, that's great for the hackers. They have more ways of uh, exploiting vulnerabilities now. 
So that's an issue, lack of operability. And uh, with the technology that's out there in the in the wild, a lot of it is dated. A lot of it doesn't connect with each other good. So the it requires multiple methods or mechanisms of addressing the vulnerabilities. It's not a one stop shop. You know, you click this and you're taken care of. It's so understanding that, understanding what connects with what, what you've got to do, you just really getting a good handle of your environment and understanding that interoperability exists there. I mentioned the date of the hardware, the legacy hardware and software. You see that a lot in the healthcare arena. Uh, the FDA, it's just interesting, the federal government uh, approves medical devices and you can't have a non-federally uh, approved device in healthcare systems, but yet the, the, they they run two thousand uh, one to seven. Uh, they don't they don't you know keep up with the current systems for their approval. They're always behind, always behind. So there's, I mean, you have to deal with it. Uh, if you're in a ho hospital and you, and you want to run infusion pumps or you want to use leverage some of the sophistication there, you, then legacy hardware, software, something you can't get rid of. So you had to you have to work through that, figure out how you can protect yourself while you have that in place. Uh, you got it, consumers. Now we're, we're letting the end users have access to their medical data through through web portals. You know, that's not today. That's not real new. That's been out for several years, but it's just another avenue of where we have to be careful, not just accessing the data. But what happens if I access my medical record, I print it and you know, I'll leave it out and I forget her. I'm at a coffee shop somewhere and I'll, I'll leave it and I leave. And now I've got my data sitting out there. So how do you combat yourself? Look, technology to address that, policies will. But it's just thinking through, again, the opportunities that, that were issues. Stolen data is valuable. Just said that uh, healthcare information is a valuable commodity. And so just keep an eye on it. Now that's healthcare. Whatever your business is, whatever the the trade that you're in, data is valuable. So uh, just being mindful of that. And these these attackers are. <laughs> you can be rest assured they're very uh, aware of it. Lack of cybersecurity education is probably the biggest challenge or issue that companies face. You can spend zillions on technology. Technology don't exist today that's going to prevent somebody clicking an inappropriate email. They don't do it. If you know about it, we don't. I mean, love to. It doesn't exist. That's where this education comes in. We have to spend a lot of time. And it's a lot of energy, in most cases money on educating the end users got to um so that's the lack of that is an easy target for hackers they're no longer having to try to penetrate the impenetrable walls they'll call nancy and sell her on something and boom there's there they are they're in and you know so being aware of that spending that time going that extra mile to, to educate folks focus on education just as much as we do Technology. A growing number of IoT devices. There, you can see we've already talked about that. It's exploding. And then the remote workforces. Now, remote workforces aren't real new, but COVID caused that to explode. You know, you're seeing that now. That's become a requirement. You can't hardly get anybody to come in the office anymore. Uh, they want to work remote. Well, so what does that do for your environment? Well, again, if your data is in is at the end the point where they're connecting to now. We've got their endpoints. You got to worry about, you know, their their own devices. Are they secured? Are they, what are they doing to keep those those taken care of? What kind of practices they use at home? What does their connectivity look like? How exposed are they? You know, you got to think through all those factors as you're developing that tunnel back into your environment to ensure that you're as secure as possible. Uh, and then that's just possible. There's no such thing as being ironclad, but it's it's doing the best you can uh, with with what you got and what you know.
Right. Hey, uh, one thing I meant to say, hey, we can make this very interactive um, uh, with you guys here and online. So if you got a question online, just uh, put it, I guess, in the chat. And it, okay, yeah, you can just unmute yourselves and, and ask the question. Um, if you do put it in the chat, um, Katie can give us that, and then y'all can just ask questions as, as we go. We will have some time at the very end to ask some, you know, questions if you like. So anyway, <clears throat> another scenario, uh, right here. So, um, this was a, um, uh, let's say this one was a, um, uh, a manufacturing company. And so they, um, uh, came in, their ERP was, uh, compromised, uh, they um, happen to see, actually, I'm just going to kind of flip over here. This is kind of a continuation. So um, when when they started looking, uh, all their servers were infected. So um, the uh, uh, it was widespread. Uh, they did do backups, which was good. This is all ransomware. This turned out to be a ransomware situation. Um, they did do backups. Uh, however, on this one, um, their backup their backups were on site. OK. Uh, there was no separation of the data to another, you know, location, another data center, or whatever. So uh, the these guys had infected the the backups too, actually deleted them, and so there was no, um, uh, you know, recovery. So uh, the they wanted to get the FBI involved, so they did. Um, the FBI they they never say to to pay it, so and they didn't, and. Um, so we were trying to help them like, you know, there's not much we can do, but, you know, rebuild from, you know, whatever you got. So we were trying to find some, any kind of data for them. Um, turned out that uh, they were actually doing an upgrade uh, with uh, with an application, one of their application vendors, uh, their main application vendor. Fortunately for them, they that guy had done a backup, I don't know, a few weeks prior. So yes, they lost a month's worth of data, but it wasn't, you know, you know, 30 years worth of data or whatever. So, um, so we were able to restore from it and, um, uh, which benefited them, but, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of time rebuilding all the, you know, re-imaging all the computers, uh, a lot of downtime for them. Um, so, uh, you know, just really kind of, I mean, they had done some planning, but uh, not probably the correct planning. So uh, that really cost them. And we're going to go into some of the details on, you know, maybe some proper planning. Uh, Mike's going to get with you on that. So um, as we go through, but I'll continue to give you scenarios of things that, that we've seen. So um, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Uh, it seemed like that was about a month, bro. Really. Yeah. yeah, it was about a month. Maybe maybe a little longer. So, well, yeah, well, it took us about five or six days to even find that. So, but fortunately, that that just happened to be the case. They got very lucky. Uh, but uh, but yeah, if they had just been dependent on the backups, which most companies will be, that that had been the case, and they they all got deleted, then it would have been bad news for them. So. Yeah, the question was just asked, how long did it take to recover from that that uh, potential hack? And it, it does depend. It depends on the spread of the the attack. It depends on how many endpoints are affected because make no mistake about it. You know, that first slide Stan showed you had want to cry. If you've been ransomware, that's probably what you want to do. It is a very, very heavy, intensive recovery process. So I say that to say, so let's try to avoid it. Let's spend the time and the effort on the front end so that it, it mitigates the need to do that. You've got to, every device in an organization has got to be inspected to see if it has an infection on it. So that's, if you've got thousands of devices, think about it. Every device that has it has got to be wiped, formatted, servers, endpoints, whatever. So it, it's it's a very expensive recovery process in both time dollars so you know i mean that's not that's just that's the way it is that's if you get it you, you know that's one way you can be certain that it's clear and then of course then then identifying the point of entry and taking care of that some that but uh uh but anyway yeah. 
to we were we were working for the client correct correct so because they were so we uh they, we, we did not get involved in the so we do a lot of things we manage services okay. so uh uh, the question was, hey, uh, were we working directly for the client or uh, through the uh, underwriter? And we were working directly for the client. I don't know if they had cybersecurity um, insurance. Uh, most likely they probably did. They were a fairly large manufacturing. Um, we do, as what I was going to say, we do a lot of uh, types of things, managed services and everything. So usually with our managed service customers, we're a lot more involved. With these guys, we don't do the managed services for them. Well, now, now we do, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, before we did not. So uh, they they manage their own, and um, but we were we're we're always involved with upgrades, installs, things like that for them. We've been you know for twenty years, but they they handle their own security. But uh, now we're much more involved. So okay, so prevention and preparation. That's you know that that's key. Uh, again, not just technically educational um, exposure uh, having seminars just like this and having staff spend time with, with somebody it you know you can there the there are campaigns that um, individuals can can go through on their own you know they can you send them a training slide or whatever and they click and go through the session and, and complete the training there's just no substitute for interactive face-to-face -face communication and training so try to factor that in when we're all possible but any training is better than none so uh, you know just making sure that that the staff are prepared that your frontline phone people are prepared to answer a phone call that's going to come from somebody that if, if they would just think through it would would say uh let me check on something make sure you got policies and procedures in place that checks and balances so that people don't have the ability to make those decisions quickly. Anytime somebody's calls, you want something done immediately, immediately. That's probably not good, you know, so call a timeout and get it checked out. But again, that's just, just part of the preparation aspect. And Stan's made mention to it that uh, having backups, and I'll use this term air gap. Stan had said that a uh, customer didn't have their backups separated from their network well that's what air gap that's all it means is that you've got something that's no longer that's not contiguous so that if if your network gets gets infected your your data is somewhere else so it, it gives you an, an extra level of protection so you know just being prepared uh, um, and then part of the prevention mechanism you know just recognizing what you got and because <laughs> as we got there in this in this middle line you there is a high degree of probability that some incident is going to happen to your organization. It, it may not be catastrophic, but there will probably be an incident that hits your organization if you use the internet or if you're on a network. But don't wait, that's unplug all your switches. Don't let anybody bring USBs in, you know, which that's not that's not reasonable so there's a high degree of probability that you're going to be facing a situation like this so the question you know how how prepared are you you know when you're sitting around thinking after we've talked here today how prepared are you you know you think you're in good shape need some need some help don't know uh, that's what that's what this is all about so better figure it out now than <laughs> than after you come in and find yourself in a situation like that so Um, what are some of the questions? Well, uh, organizations will say, well, nobody's interested in me. I'm too small. Well, we know firsthand that's not correct. The size of the organization doesn't necessarily correlate with the attack. Now, sure, uh, people always want to get the biggest bang for the buck, but that, and that's the only target. Um, they're going through, I mean, they target education, the education sector. How much money do you think is in the education sector? So, you know, it's not about always about the money. It's about the aggravation and the frustration. So everybody is susceptible. Every organization. Viruses, malware, ransomware, which is just a variation of malware, um, is 
you know, that, that's probably the most damaging what's out there. But there's other, you know, there, there's all kind of variants there that's doing all kinds of different things. Um, maybe sitting there just exfiltrating your data off site. You don't know it's doing in small enough increments that systems on site aren't detecting it. So, you know, it's just, that's, a, that's an opportunity out of date firmware and software. It's amazing the, the amount of systems that are vulnerabilities that can be mitigated by just doing Windows updates frequently. Uh, you know, now, I'm, hey, uh, I know you don't want to doing them right after they come out scary. If you've ever dealt with Windows, you know, they may crash updates, but but having a, a thematic cycle of applying those updates as quickly as, as possible and uh, doing it consistently. Uh, system servers, network gear, firewalls, including part of network gear, whatever those things you have, make sure that you disable the default username and credentials on that stuff. I mean, this is common sense, but you'd be surprised at, at how many systems are out there today with that enabled still running. So, you know, just just keeping stuff up to date. Uh, make sure if you got a firewall, it obviously it's got support and, and, and it's keeping itself, you know, current because of these, these things are dynamically changing. You need you know, to make sure that you have most up to date stuff. Uh, phishing, spam email, social engineering, they're all all part of the same hat uh, uh just again education being being aware of that and knowing what what to look at and it's not very hard if you know if you just take the time and uh, be made aware of what to look for and see what's going on um there are i think there's another yes um wireless we said earlier wireless has exploded so the ability to infiltrate a network via its wireless infrastructure is something to be looked at and explored. The um, the old days of the, like one of the wireless protocols, uh, WPA2, uh, uh, is is really the minimum standard you, you need to have for a trusted access to your environment. So it it just it's sort of like a two factor thing. It's using your your um, a, a database, a trusted source, whether it's your Windows shop, it could be Active Directory, whatever your trusted source of information is to authenticate the user onto the network. So you don't have to worry about pre-shared keys. You know, you, you see those things and you'll walk in somewhere and they'll have those posted all over the place. Well, you know, that that's not too secure. So you don't have to worry about pre-shared keys or somebody forgetting a pre-shared key. and having to call the help desk or whatever um, is leveraging that type of, of environment. But that that's what helps offset some of the vulnerabilities the wireless networks expose. Uh, lack of planning. And that is falls in the realm of, of recovery scenarios, right? Uh, you can have the greatest backups in the world, but you know what? Nobody cares about backups. I don't care about them. What I do care about is restores. That's what I care about. So, and I want to make sure that restore is current. I've tested it and proven it, and I can do that quickly. I don't have to pull out a manual and spend half a day to restore anything. And I know it works. So that that planning process, doing, you know, let's let's take some of the stuff, time we've spent investing in, make sure we can do it. We can walk through it. Being fair. Lack of monitoring. Yeah, stuff happens all the time, and and we don't have the time to be sitting there looking at all this stuff. So it's it's investing in equipment that does that for us. It's helping us do the inspection, and and only letting us be aware of hey, here's a potential problem you need to look at, uh, and 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 looking, you know, then taking the time to look through it. Lack of password policies. How many likes long? There's real long passwords and having to change them every all the time nobody likes that nobody does and so what we'll see is people will just like the pre-share keys they'll have their passwords on a post-it note on their monitors or worse in a notepad on their desktop on the machine so you know but but we need them we need this password but better yet it'd be great if we get away with passwords 
just use other methods of authentication. But until we, you know, the organizations get there, then make sure that our password policies, passwords are complex. Yes, sir. Yeah, so there's there's biometric tools where you can take uh, a piece of equipment, take all your interacting systems and you develop the connections into those systems. But you know, behind the scenes, so you walk down, sit down at a desk, whether whether it's biometrics, whether it's a badge, you know, the, the same same type of device, you go in proximity badges or whatever, and, and it will take your the badge. Now again, again, that's you get to make sure there's physical security. I mean, if somebody grabs your badge, then they have access to whatever you do. Uh, but, um, uh, but yeah, that's that's what it is. You walk up to a place where it logs you in, and you've got access to. But yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. No. Multi-factor works great if uh, if if you control the systems. Obviously, if you don't, you know, like vendor logins and stuff. Um, so one 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 method I, I personally use, I just use an encrypted uh, password. Um, you know, kind of, yeah, yeah, little uh, lockbox thing on my computer, so it's all encrypted and and uh, and I kind of keep it all on there. We actually uh, utilize a. a a version of that for um, even uh, company wide, you know, because because we got some 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 passwords that we need uh, company wide that we can't put multi factor or something like that. But I definitely agree. If you definitely control it, multi factor is a good way to go. Good way to go. Hey, before I turn it over, I, I there's I, I I got two examples just that are not on here. Just him, him saying it. Hey, people are not interested in me. I, I'll give you one one example. Uh, a little tiny town. Um, got hacked, had eight computers, and uh, you know the guy's like, I don't even know why they even want to look at me. Well, I'm like, well, they didn't even know they were looking at you. They these hackers, what they do is they do they do scans of IP addresses. They're just bomb, bomb, bomb. I mean, they they don't know who they're scanning. They're just they're just scanning. And then what it is, they they come up with something that's interesting. It's like, okay, hey, I'll just log it, and you know. Two months later, they come back by and they say, okay, yeah, what, why was this interesting? So then they, you know, hey, run a few more tools and like, oh, there it is. Hey, I, I'm in. So then they they do whatever they want, right? So. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That, that that's very typical. Yeah, right. Right, exactly. So, so small, small little town, eight computers, <laughs> and I got hacked. Uh, another one was on the wireless hacking. I was just thinking about this. Uh, this is this is several years ago, um, but it was a school system, a, a, a K twelve school system, and uh, they thought, hey, you know what would be a great idea would help our um, uh, the police is just to put a public wireless access so that they could just drive up by the school, get on. And, you know, if there's some, you know, I don't know, active shooter or whatever, they can just hop on and, and and maybe get some data or whatever. Well, the thing is, guess what? Everybody else discovered is open too. So, um, and, and, they, and they got hacked uh, through their wireless network. But I'm like, hey, they were letting people ride on. And <laughs> they could just sit out there in their cars all night long, you know, until they fit, figure something out. So, um, so it was just kind of another interesting thing. So, yeah, but just to, to piggyback on, um, on the question you'd ask about password, a single sign on MFA is great, but single sign on you're going to enter a password. So it's a passwordless being completely passwordless is great if you could ever get there. Now that's that's a <laughs> that's a reach, but if we could could ever get away from ever needing a password, it would be ideal. But if you can't, then yes, MFA for any elevated permissioning account, any kind of access remote. Is, is absolute, you know, a, a very, very, very good high recommendation and to keep yourself safe <laughs> for sure. 
All right, let's. Yeah, hackers compromise corporate data with relative ease. And it's amazing as the technology is improving drastically, next gen firewalls, a lot of this stuff. We still see enterprises get eaten alive. Why? We see that. I mean, again, it gives back. You can have the great technology if it's not configured correctly. It doesn't, you know, if it's not configured optimally. Um, or again, lack of education. Uh, the doors open some other way. You're seeing it. They're, they're, they're getting in. It's pretty simple. And it continues. And it's evident by what we're seeing out there in the marketplace. And again, it's lack of cybersecurity awareness. Um, poor security practices in some instances, none of security practices. So just you know, again, it, uh, if I could say this, you've probably heard me. I've mentioned I've already said it three or four times today. I'll say it many more is be prepared is let's educate and that's that's something that's relatively simple uh doesn't cost as much as buying a next gen firewall or or other stuff but just continue to educate and don't spend the time doing that and crafting policies that the organization can utilize continue to build those barriers the more barriers you can build, the more difficult it is to get in the kingdom. Attackers, if you look at the kill chain, again, this may be a little bit, but if you look at the pattern, it's about a six, seven step process, depending on who you look at. The hacker has to be successful in every one of those steps. You only have to be successful in one of them to break it. So the odds are with us, we just put the put those those tools in place. And here's a firewall um, would be one of those tools that starting at the perimeter and not just any firewall. It needs to be a next gen firewall. And the thing about firewalls is what we're seeing today in the market is a lot of traffic comes in. It's encrypted. It's HTTPS. Well, how much of that traffic do you think the firewall can read? None of it's encrypted. So we have to do something to make that tra enable that traffic to be uh, read and inspected, which is called deep packet inspection, SSL decryption. So again, that's just you can have the firewall that has the capability, but take it the next step. Let's look in, let's set it up to where we can get in there. Look at what's happening. Look at all traffic coming through through the network it, before it gets into our network. And we've got antivirus up there beside the firewall, and that's the that's uh, antivirus intrusion prevention. Uh, I, I don't want to just be detected to you. I want intrusion prevented. So, you know, the pre preventive mechanisms, all that is part of the package of the firewall again before it gets into the to the environment. Um, making sure that we, you know, we got that. You got SIM, and I'm going to we're going to go into detail in these a little bit. So I'm just what I'm going to do is just point these out. I don't want to, uh, you know, mention it a couple times. So th these are some of the items: uh, a SIM endpoint detection, and you said intrusion prevention training, um, MFA multi-factor authentication. These are some things that we can put in place to uh, to help us out, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to kind of dive into those uh, those uh, preventative methods and some of the things that we've seen with. Uh, uh, again, just firsthand situations that we've seen. So um, this first one um, is, uh, this was a transportation company. Um, they uh, they got hacked, uh, as, a, as, as you see, bro broke into the email rules. So basically what happened was they got, they got um, control of their email server. And so what this hacker did was he just started monitoring emails going back and forth figured out who the the owner or president of the company was and so he was really monitoring this well just just so happened this guy was going to buy a piece of property for seven hundred fifty thousand dollars so um he uh was communicating back you know back and forth with the attorney and you know talking about different things probably with the with the listing agent whatever and so um 
anyway, so they have made the decision, hey, we're going to buy the property. And so he um, uh, emails the attorneys like, hey, where do I need to, uh, you know, wire the money? Well, right then, the guy says, ha, here's my chance. So he has already set up another domain that looks almost identical to the attorney's domain, got an email ready, and then uh, intercepts all email back to that attorney, and he starts responding as the attorney saying, okay, yeah, this is where you need to wire that money. So that's that's exactly what they did. He's like, okay, did, didn't ever verify uh, with, a, with a phone call or anything. He gets the information, wires the money to the wrong account. Well, guess what? Hey, that money sat there for about 10 minutes and it was gone to Europe or somewhere. So um, uh, by the time they realized that, I don't know, I think that was the next day or something. I can't remember. But anyway, by the time they realized it, it was, I mean, that money was gone. Uh, I think there was some, maybe, I don't know. I, I think they looked for it. I don't even know if they got any of that money back. But, uh, you know, we were kind of brought in to, you know, alleviate the issue. But, uh, you know, that was kind of beyond us. But anyway. As far as we knew, he lost seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, based on that that hack, so very very deceptive. The guy, was, you know, the hacker, very patient. You know, he just waited to the opportunity and then was able to get three quarters of a million dollars. So, so anyway, some some ways to prevent it. Yeah. So that's we've as we've mentioned about firewalls i went in a little more detail about this just a minute ago so this is just another another slide and and, and again repeating uh, making sure that we're utilizing these these products to the to the most of their capabilities uh, getting them configured and helping us inspect uh, everything everything that's that can possibly be looked at as it comes through and utilizing all the services that we can hey everything that we could that we can that we have at our arsenal to use you know, let's use it. So, and, and part of that process is knowing uh, what size product you're going to need to be able to to do that without disrupting your your business. So, you know, just that's all, it's all part of the package. Yeah. Next scenario. So, yeah, I mean, um, and 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 the and the thing is, I from what I can remember, I believe that guy, there's, you know, kind of an out of support firewall. So, uh, wasn't getting any updates or anything. So, um, so that was, uh, definitely, uh, an issue for him. So this next product that we're going to talk about the SIM, um, would have helped him also because, you know, the discovery would have been made, but here's, here's another situation. Um, so, uh, yeah, this, this right here is kind of more of a classic, uh, ransomware, um, attack that uh that happened uh with that splash page that i showed y'all right off the bat um but uh some of the things that it, this next product would do would really um help alleviate that and not have to uh uh pay pay the pay the ransom or you know spend many many um times uh there's uh, let me let me give you a couple of examples well i'll tell you what let me let me let you talk about the product and then i'll i'll give you a couple of examples where it's successful I'm sorry. I guess I guess I had uh yeah, I kind of over over talked about this. Um yeah, this is okay. This is an instance um uh so so anyway, this is this is a K12 school system too. So the thing is is what they did was they had um uh you know, a lot of their a lot of their desktops, servers got encrypted and everything. They actually had a backup. They actually put it at another site. But it was it was directly connected to their um, company. I mean, uh, directly connected to their you know network. So yes, they they you know there it was a county school system. Hey, here's here's all my data right here. I'm gonna send it 30 miles, you know you know to the to the west, and you know we're good. Well, you're you're good against you know a natural disaster, a tornado coming through or something, but you're not good because you're a hacker because hey, a hacker can see it all, right? You know once he's on that network, so. Anyway, so that that was kind of the, uh, you know, the the uh, the scenario. So. Yeah, their initial thoughts were 
when they set it up that way, they were never considering being hacked. It was all, as Stan mentioned, a, just another, another alternate location to prevent from a, you know, some kind of event, water, fire, something of that nature. So, just, you know, education system, small county in Alabama, they didn't think, didn't think anybody that would ever happen. So, you know, it, it, it can anywhere. Uh, yeah, so the SIM is, you know, talked about lack of monitoring. We mentioned one of the one of the vulnerabilities that we have. Well, the SIM product does that for us. So um, uh, it's a it's an inline tool that, again, as long as we have all of our endpoints and information pointing to that, all logging has to be enabled correctly on the endpoints. But uh, it will uh, receive the logs from all of our equipment and and does aggregation it'll take them and it starts looking for uh, these consistencies that will identify unusual behavior and and then will alert us on just those things so you can imagine if you had to sit around and look at the logs from all these various devices you'd go and you would be pretty you'd make a long day so uh using the leveraging these tools to do that for us and again having the correlation um is and really, really, really helps us in, in being able to, to respond and, and to um, to deal with these things as they come up. And that's key. Yeah. It, yeah, everything that you that 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 has that can send them to there. So your firewall logs, of course, all of your in your app, your servers, your endpoints, anything that you can that can log data, point it to this guy. The more you can send to it. The better, because it, it's it, then that that increases the likelihood of it giving you something to work with. That is that it is something we need to take action on. So yeah, the more you put in there, the better. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind in today's architectures, how many of you here or know or have clients that have on-prem systems as well as leveraging the cloud? Well, so again, architecture is everything. You know, this if if you have a situation like that, known as a hybrid type of an environment, and you have two exit points. Uh, in other words, if you don't send all the cloud traffic back over. A tunnel into your in on premise environment and everything egress is there. Well, then you've got to figure out, okay, well, how am I going to catch the traffic in my cloud? All right. So just designing designing the infrastructure so that uh, you, know, you know what you got, where you need to get it. So you'd have to deploy something similar to this to inspect that um, as well. So any you know, you just think about it again about this part of implementing it. If you have um, every place that that exists that's disconnected from your own premise, so to speak, you know you want to have have that traffic, have something in there that's that's catching it, inspecting it as well. So it's just, just something else to think about. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, this uh, what's great about this is that um, since it you know consolidates all your logs, you're not having to and, and and there's an engine, obviously, kind of separating out, looking for, like it says, patterns and, um, you know, things that, um, you know, a hacker might do. And it's going to alert it like like for us, it'll it'll alert us. I mean, it can alert you if you want to be, um, you know, notified. And then so it kind of says, OK, hey, there's, you know, 100 possibilities, but hey, really, there's only three. So now I can go, you know, look, hey, you know, a physical guy like like uh, Mike, he can go look at these three and like, OK, is that is that is that true? Is that a false positive? I mean, is that, hey, I need to look at it. So that's kind of what it helps out with. And so that, you know, we've got, um, you know, for us, we've got somebody looking at 24 seven, you know, for those particular instances. So I'm going to give you two two things where this has saved the customer. Um, one was uh, customer Fourth of July. OK, and not not only 4th of July, it was a Saturday, 4th of July it was about, I don't know, a couple of years ago. So um, 
we got we got an alert about 6 a.m and um the uh um the alert was you know hey one of the one of the systems had gotten compromised uh so you know i mean we hopped right on it looked yes it was actually a ransomware uh we were able to isolate that immediately um we uh saw that there was a there's a ransomware note and um we verified backups backups were clean we actually re we just went and restored the immediately um and because uh, we had just had the backup the the night before so um everything was back up and running by by noon uh for the customer hey it was great they i mean we we alerted them um but obviously they weren't doing business fourth of july so uh they were up no, nothing nothing really got um you know they didn't really have any data that got you know compromised because we were able to restore it found the issue patched it you know it was a it was a it was a bug that had uh, recently come out so um so it was that quick um and uh we were able to you know i mean they had i don't know about 20 20 virtual servers so we were able to isolate that one and and, and get it done immediately uh, another one that actually happened uh, maybe about a year ago was for a travel agency um kind of kind of similar scenario um they uh had 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 a server got we got alert from a from our uh, sim that said hey uh this is actually that was that was not ransomware that was uh someone had had hacked in set up a mail relay so no 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 compromise of of data or anything but uh they they were set up as a mail relay call the customers like hey here's the scenario uh could, could develop into a ransomware or some some other issue um okay a mail relay is kind of like so you know these phishing things that you might get uh they usually use mail relays what they do is they say okay i don't i don't i don't want to be blamed so i'm gonna hack into somebody else's system set them up send all, they're sending out all the mail relays. I'm monitoring it to see what's happening so that, hey, if I do find a vulnerability, I can go grab it. So that's kind of what it is. So it's setting up a uh, a relay to send out emails, but that's not attached to me. So so that's kind of what that means. So um, so anyway, uh, so we, 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 we actually found it was actually a vulnerability. I think they had come out just a couple of days beforehand on one of their applications. So... Um, we, you know, that unfortunately they had put out put out a patch for it and everything. So, kind of like, hey, here's a scenario. We, you know, it, 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 nothing's happening to your data right now, but you know, could. So we had a conversation. Um, they decided to shut that server down, and we patched it, brought them back up. You know, actually that was again. I think we restored from a backup that was clean, and then uh, patched it and everything. So uh, I had them up, back up and running that particular server, you know, within the day. So, um, you know, just minimize the attack and um, this 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 thing caught it. Because if not, I mean, it would have spread to all their servers and uh, everything. So, uh, so anyway, it's a very good tool. It fi finds things very quickly for you. And if that does, something does happen, then, you know, we can, we can identify it and mitigate it. So uh okay import section yes yeah, so we've talked about the perimeter and and things and but something gets in let's say that uh, somebody clicks on a phishing email and they're they're actually downloading a ransomware payload as part of that click the evolution of endpoint protection has gone to from antivirus in the old days of antivirus which it it served its time it was good uh, now to more advanced uh, which is actually called endpoint detection and response so it it takes action on questionable activity based upon what you tell it to do but it's it's a, uh, a much more advanced process it's using uh, artificial intelligence it's using heuristics it's it's looking and monitoring your your environment your workstation says okay here's what's normal hey here's some stuff that's this isn't typical and and then obviously if it finds something that is that is a known um, exploit then it will take action uh, which of 
most of which we re we highly recommend that if an, an endpoint gets infected with a known exploit is we disable the NIC and take it offline. It's better to have a help desk call about one user that's inconvenienced than letting this thing sit around and bring your whole corporation down. So, but but that's the endpoint is become a huge player, an area of concern, and, and and one that we're looking at pushing this high end protection down to today. Again, because of the behavioral and the social engineering that we're seeing uh, prevalent in the workplace. So, um, that's that's right. what what we're looking at now: endpoint detection and response. So here's another instance where um, uh, organization, they um, uh, had a number of records compromised. Um, uh, I believe this one, I'm trying to remember this one, I believe it was a uh, school system where um, they had uh, st you know, student records compromised. The, the issue with that is that um, with these schools is when you compromise a student record, is it's got their social security number on it, right? Well. You got the social security number, then you can maybe open up a credit card, right? Open up a credit card. But hey, if it's a six-year-old, well, guess what? They're probably not going to open up a credit card until they're 18. Well, when they turn 18, they find out they got terrible credit because, you know, this hacker's been opening up, you know, credit card after credit card in their name. Um, it's not a good situation. So, um, uh, which is, uh, it, I don't think that happened in this situation, but I've heard of it happening. So, um but uh, anyway, that's kind of uh, one of the things that uh, we've seen with this kind of thing. Um, so uh, one of the things with this was uh, this happened through a, a phishing attempt. OK, so this this is not the same one that I'm talking about. This is just happened to be one. This is this is one that I actually got from uh, what it looked like was one of our employees um, just, you know, ask for a cell number. I uh, usually see something a little more uh, difficult on these things, but uh, but this is just having to be one I, I I got. So I'm like, hey, I'm just going to copy it in here. But the thing is, with security awareness, um, which um, Michael go over, you're kind of looking at, you know, you're trying to train your users to look for certain things. Obviously, right here, you see this gmail.com. I mean, that's obviously not me. So um, that would have been one way for him to, to tell, but uh, uh, but it's something with security awareness training that you can find out on uh, on this thing. So, Mike, I'm gonna let you talk about that. Yeah, let's can we go back to that slide just a second? Uh, okay, yeah. So, I, I talked about this briefly, but just quickly, you know, a couple of things here that that are are fairly obvious. Number one, I told you that these. Uh, erroneous emails are wanting you to take action quickly, right? It's it's always urgent. You know, this one says quickly. Sometimes may hey, this is urgent. You may see it in the subject line. There's always going to be some sense of urgency. They don't want you to think about it. They go, oh, oh my gosh, stand even still. Let me see myself. I mean, you know, they're, they're, that's that's the, the what they're wanting you to think. And typically, that's what we do. <laughs> we re, we reply quickly. We're trying to be responsive. So we see those, that's a sign of, hold on, let me look a little further. And then again, as Stan had mentioned, you can just hover over the, uh, if you see something like that, that's asking for a quick response, just a quick verification. Did that really come from Stan or who I think it is going up and hovering over their email and, and the, the domain, the real domain is never hidden. You just have to go up and look and you can see what it is and, and do that extra step of validation. That's the type of stuff to train uh, staff and, and ourselves, all of us on, is just, just being aware of that. Uh, okay. And and we, we've mentioned there's various ways of doing that. Um, the anti-phishing campaigns where it's, I spoke of that earlier, where we send out random random trainings and, and have, you know, go through these little courses or uh, videos. That's great, uh, video training. Um, Again, I I think we you know adding face-to-face uh, -face meetings and and having having opportunities you know it's not it's not feasible to do that frequently but you know have some occasional uh, hands eye to eye communication being there to field questions talk through things uh, is is very very important now moving toward um, 
the social behavioral down to to some of the the more practical looking at logs, making sure that that systems are logging and that there's going to be a footprint left if you catch it before they it, the the attack has been completed. If you wait afterwards, there will be nothing to look at. The log's gone. Uh, on the Windows device, once they've come in and done what they're going to do, you can go to the Windows event log and it's, there's nothing there. It's gone. So you want to have, so you want to catch it while it's happening. And that's again the, the sim. There's various tools there, but the sim will help us do that. Keep those logs, and we can go back and and trace the steps, so to speak. And then remediation. Um, what do we do? You know, we've we've just been had. We got two hundred thousand devices, 150 of them in the field. I've got 300 servers that are located all across the country, some in the cloud. My goodness, we've been hacked. What are we going to do? How are we going to recover? Is, is having be thinking through it and have a plan and not some plan that you write up. We write up and we go, hey, I got it. I got my plan. You throw it in a box somewhere. And then when something happens, you have to go find where's the plan. You dust it off and look at it, but something that you routinely go over. Um, environments change <laughs> rapidly and so that means the plans probably need to keep up with the environment so you know just being aware we uh, training the key players and what their roles are in the event this happens so that it's not a chinese fire drill the moment it happens it's an organized chaos so to speak is is what we're you know what we're trying to deal with it all right Yeah, I will say on that uh, security awareness training. Um, so uh, a, a lot of programs, I mean, ours and I mean, a lot of other companies like us, uh, what, what you do is you can do that video training and it logs everything. So you know who did the training, who didn't. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, Webroot, I know, has got a pretty good one. Uh, you have? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. But anyway, hey, the, the good thing is, is it logs it. You know who did the training. You can get those reports uh, when they when we set up those simulated, uh, you know, phishing attacks. You know, it goes to a website that we put out or, you know, one of these other ones. And so and then it logs to see who clicked on it, you know, how deep they went, all that kind of stuff. So then you can do remediated training for them. So uh, so we've had we had uh, I'll give an example of one of our clients. They're a. Um, uh actually they do a bunch of convenience stores and stuff so <laughs> they do it for their employees and uh so it, it it took about a year or two for them to finally okay hey they're they're nobody nobody's responding to them it's great so then um, one of our guys we do uh, manage service for them so they set it up to be one of our help desk te technicians well sure enough everybody in the in the company clicked on it so because they didn't do the, you know, what they're supposed to so hover over the email address and stuff. So just, uh, you know, like, hey, it could come from anybody, right? So, uh, so anyway, so it's kind of one of those things. I, I think that's a, a good way to do it. So you can get, so you, so basically, you get logs on, you know, who's doing the training and everything. Uh, this right here, I'm gonna kind of run through it. I know we're kind of getting low on time, so. Um, another instance where uh, 3,500 records were, this was not one of our clients, this was uh, somebody else, um, but I thought it was kind of interesting. They found the the records, they didn't even know they were hacked, and um, they found the records out there on the dark web, and uh, I was like, wow, we, we weren't even aware. So, um, not I, I wish I knew more details about this, but uh, I thought it was very interesting that they found this, so. Uh, I, I don't, I, I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll let I, Michael's the expert. So. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very, they're pretty, pretty frequent. Uh, what you can do, you type in your information and they look around out there. Chances are everybody in this room's information's on the dark web. <laughs> and, I mean, it's probably there, but, but yeah, there's several tools that can do that. Um, and we've, we've spoken through passwords so don't think 
there's really much more we need to add here. We can just know the importance of it and and uh, um, and making sure we have have something in place to, to keep ourselves uh, secure there. Uh, another another one. Um, so this one, uh, this one actually was an insurance company right here. Uh, what happened was um, this fraud came through um, uh, some uh, phone call. Uh, the the hacker was using uh, calls into it. Uh, they thought the you know it was like a receptionist thought they knew who it was. They didn't. Uh, anyway, ended up taking their email and responding to them. And then they responded back, so now they got the email, and then uh, ended up kind of kind of very similar to the uh, the quarter mi the three quarter million deal where they got the information. Well, basically they just transferred sixteen thousand dollars right off to these guys. They they caught it like an hour later. Actually, were able to get most of the money back, surprisingly enough. But uh, um, but yeah, it was one of those things where they they just they just called in and. Um, it, and uh, there was no, you know, checks and balances like, hey, is this a valid, you know, you know, person that I'm even talking to? So anyway, so. I will just reiterate one thing on passwords and we'll move on, is that for privileged accounts, you know, can't emphasize enough that we make it more difficult to access those. So in, in multi-factor or to verify and validate that the user is is real. Uh, that's the person we want on the system because that's that's where the damage comes is from those elevated accounts. Um, the fraud that uh, Stan just mentioned too, that's where leads into uh, there was that could probably have been prevented if the commission had some type of controls, some types of measures in place. Well, you really don't know what you got until you have a third party come in and do a security assessment. Uh, so that. that Part of that assessment is is evaluating not just the posture of the technical aspect of the environment, but also, again, very critical is process, policies, education, training. Very integral to a security, a very strong security preventive posture. And so that assessment will do that, do that very thing. See what you're doing. What is your what is your password positive? What do you do? What's the process for authorizing the various things? Is there checks and balances um, and, and, and evaluating the, the environment from that standpoint? External pen test is another way that, um, and on security assessments, again, that's also looking at, I've already said that the, it, it does include the evaluation of the technical component and posture of your environment, uh, looking for unpatched systems uh, looking for making sure we're not running default credentials on stuff i mean that that's some of the low-hanging fruit but that, that's part of it as well as we're, we're looking and trying to evaluate looking at the wireless how hard is it to get on your wireless network when i get on there what do i have access to that type of stuff uh, external penetration test and takes that on the outside if i'm outside trying to come in what's open what can i get to there's a website open and it's not just ports, you know, okay, yeah, here's, here's an open port, but it's what can I do once I get in there and I do a SQL injection or in other words, can I send a make up something and, 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 and get in deeper into the system, which exposes possibly usernames, passwords. Uh oh, now, now I've, I can, can do what I want. So looking at that environment can conf both configuration of the endpoint as well as ports that are open, making sure we only have open what we need open. Uh, the, you know, least that that to get all the least secure rule, make sure we know we've got just the, the minimums. And then the security uh, security continuity planning goes along with what I was talking about earlier. I got a little ahead of myself is on is being prepared for an event and having a, the teams assembled uh, to help in those various aspects, because we'd mentioned earlier there are several resources required to help recover from an event. You know, you got your endpoint team, you've got your decision makers that they've got to be need to be reached up. What do we do? Do we engage the FBI or not? Uh, do we do we need to notify someone? What what's the what's the lawyer? What do we what do we need to do? What's you know having the teams in place beforehand? So then you just you know we're assembling them. Well, well 
get, getting those plans, having those plans assembled. They're very, very <laughs> come in very helpful in, in the event of a security incident. And because you're, you're going to need it. If, if we if we got that, um, the security continuity plan helps us navigate through the event. The business continuity plan helps us out while we're trying to do that. Um, you know, it's going to take if it takes weeks, months to recover from an event. Well, well, we can, business can't be shut down. So how do we continue to run and operate while we're also trying to clean up and get the environment back on? So thinking through those, how we're going to keep doing business. Uh, that's that's a challenge, and it's those business continuity depends on what level of continuity you want to have. If it's real time access to systems, that is not going to be cheap. I mean, if that's the cost of your business, then that's you know that's how you plan. That's what you look at, design it. But you know, having up what can you get? What can you live with? And then crafting up a plan that that meets your your to the business need. Rapid response team to uh, you know you got somebody that can deal with this thing quickly. Uh, trusted resource typically you're going to want somebody to help you come in and, and and try to help help organize and orchestrate a uh, recovery process and be part of it. That uh, come in and help help you uh, make some decisions. Uh, a we talked about this before backups, um, air gap backups, backups that are disconnected from your network. Um, tools to assess what's happened. We've talked about some preventive tools, and and those will, will be some of the same tools used to also assess what's going on, but there may be others. And um, and with the goal of diagnosing what's happening, and, and we need to know that just so we can remediate. What's going on? This is the is the end goal. Uh, I believe this is my last example for um, what he just uh, referenced on the uh, on the backup. So again, this was a um, uh, another uh, location that uh, they they ended up with ransomware. Um, the uh, I think they were demanding uh, you know some money. Uh, the thing is, is they paid it, but it still took another two hundred fifty thousand dollars to to clean up. You know, after after they got their data back, which fortunately they paid it and got their data back. But uh, but then, hey, you know, they could they could flip the switch again if they wanted to. <laughs> so uh, they spent another uh, quarter million dollars just trying to to clean up. And uh, um, anyway, they were they were down for about a, about a month while they were you know trying to figure out what they wanted to do. Sure. Uh, again, I, I don't I don't necessarily know about all the insurance, um, you know, needs on this one. This one I, I, I would not know. So um, but, you know, these dollar amounts that I'm showing you obviously has nothing to do with what their loss of business was. So, yeah. So that's that's, you know. We're usually not privy to that kind of information, so, um, but that's right. Okay. Yeah, right. So, um, but yeah, this is kind of a, uh, uh, kind of goes along with that scenario on those two examples where that yes they got hacked because I think one of our things like hey you will get hacked eventually um, you know we're going to try to make it as difficult as possible but you know hey those two instances we got got them up very quickly because one we detected it quickly and then second um, we were able to restore from a clean backup so do you want to say anything else about that? Okay, yeah, I'm uh, just trying to move on so we can, but anyway, so, uh, and then make sure that, you know, as uh, Mike says, tell us about that air gap, make sure that you're getting that data offsite to, you know, some some area that's not connected to you. So uh, whether that's, you know, through a provider or, um, 
there there are companies that do make air gap solutions that if you want it in your you know network or something you can provide a, an air gap that way too so uh, there is solutions like that if you if you desire if you do not want to send it to a company say like us you, there there is those kind of things so test you know we go through systematically and test that you can restore from whatever mechanism you're using to back up uh, so you'll be prepared as much prepared as possible yeah the key on that is like like what we do um, probably i would assume a lot of companies do this i don't know but what we do is like if you say hey we're going back up to you guys you set up a, a backup dr type solution then hey as soon as we get your backup we're going to say okay we want to test your backup and we will restore it into into our data center we'll, we'll kind of map you out an area and then we want you to look at it and it's like hey that looks good or it doesn't or you know goodness we're missing an old server or you know i don't know wh whatever it just verify it and then and then once a year at a minimum you want to verify that every year so uh let's see i think he's already talked about the the uh, uh the oh yeah this is kind of just rehashing just some of the things that you need that you might want to look at uh having a good security plan is always important um making sure that you have that uh you know making sure that you've got good uh uh you know threat prevention we've mentioned uh edr for your desktops we mentioned you know um uh firewalls and you know a variety of things make sure that there's stuff that you can detect you know with um so you know like the sim product that we talked about that security incident and event monitoring um making sure that your data uh is, is correct you know one thing we didn't talk a lot about but you know make sure your data is encrypted in rest or you know moving so uh, that's always key um security awareness training we talked about that on the training part um uh, same solution we just talked about it antivirus in endpoint detection that's for your endpoint devices um you know make sure you have a great backup and you're testing that and uh you know doing those security assessments every so often uh, for our managed service customers we do an external penetration test we do that once a quarter because i mean there's i mean mainly for uh just updates on all the software that comes out you know he mentioned windows i mean there's something that comes out every week but even for your applications there's things that come out that need to make make sure that we're keeping up with we do as good as we can for our managed service customers but hey we want to we detect something then hey we've got to go out and say okay hey we weren't really thinking about that particular application needing an update but uh let's get it done because that is a vulnerability so so those are the uh kind of key things there um this is just a little bit about us. Hey, we've been in business for over 20 years. Um, uh, we um, uh, kind of kind of serve every industry, um, every vertical. Uh, we um, got you know certified people like uh, Mike. He is a CSSB. Um, um, all of our engineers are certified in you know networking or you know data center type stuff, whatever. So. Um, got uh, got a number of staff uh, available to you guys uh, around the uh, southeast um, so uh, some of the things that we do offer um, network solutions data center infrastructure we do a lot of uh, uh, installs upgrades uh, you know um, obviously security is very important we offer some cloud hosting um, uh, cloud voice systems uh, managed services do a lot of that kind of maintain uh, 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 organizations IT uh, solutions um, so uh, for them from a network we can even be the vendor interface for you know any kind of technical things you know so you got it you got your main application you need to understand how that um, you know if, you, if you're having an issue but it's a technical issue hey we get on the phone with the with the uh, uh, with that um, application uh, vendor to, to work out those issues technically for you guys um uh av that it's not antivirus that is audio visual we do a lot of that too so um we have a structured cabling team um we do a lot of device repair that's mainly for schools so i don't think we have any school systems here but uh, uh we do a lot of that um you know a lot of main, uh partnerships with other manufacturers dell cisco you know variety of them 
We do have a tier three uh, data center here in, um, well, not actually not here anymore, uh, in Birmingham and Nashville. So, um, so a lot of our uh, hosting solutions uh, go through those two data centers. So, we do a lot of stuff with um, Azure and AWS too. So, um, so we do a lot of stuff with that. This is our contact information. Um, we are going to send this presentation out. Katie will be sending it out to everyone here um, and online. So, um, um, but anyway, let me open it up to questions real quick. If y'all have any um, additional questions that y'all would like to ask uh, myself or Mike. Anything online, Katie? Okay. Yeah, yeah, go, go for it. Yeah. Is let them be aware that if if they're you know, the biggest thing is if there's company data on that mobile device, it's no longer their device to do with what the, I mean, it has to be, you know, there has to be some trade off if you've got sensitive data on it and a vulnerability exists that can interact and infect the company. If you have to remote wipe or if you have to do something to that device for contaminated reasons that, you know, that, that you ensure that they, they're, they're crystal clear on the ramifications of using a personal phone. Uh, you know that 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 codes that they used to share with their corporate stuff. So that would be the first thing. The second is, yes, um, is these things here are a mess. So um, I mean, it, it's a lot of the same that we've talked about here is making sure that you you've got something running on these devices that that will help identify potential targets of exposure it's amazing what can be dropped on one of these things and you never you not know it i mean like for example i mean if you get an update once a quarter or once a month or whatever how do you know that comes from your phone manufacturer well the answer is you don't but what mechanisms do we do to go to test and say oh yeah that is from verizon or that is from samsung we're trusted don't we we're trusting that the update has come from Samsung. So imagine what vulnerability would be out there if we get an update and it's not from Samsung and you could push that out everywhere. And we just always go, yep, next, next, yeah, get it done, get it done, want that done. So, you know, it's a lot of the same things is, is verify, verify, verify. And just, just being aware of what you're doing. Um, and again, uh, the personal, phone you know facebook and for well i say unfortunately facebook has become part of the business model uh, i mean that's the communication method facebook instagram all those social media platforms that when they first came out you tell workers hey, you can't get on that and we're getting on that stuff well now that's that's the communication tool you know so it, it's just monitoring i mean monitoring to ensure that they're using it for business and uh, again um, just making sure that uh, the business if there's any shared asset on there that that they, they they're you know are aware that something happens we've got to you know got to protect the organization so yeah. yeah the 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 other thing i would say is make sure that um you know if it's company issued you know you've got full control you can make sure that uh you know, certain things are turned off, you know, things that, you know, might offer vulnerabilities and things like that. Um, you know, if it's personal, uh, you might want to put together a policy to say, hey, you know, we want all that stuff turned off. I mean, uh, you know, I don't know. It depends on how far you want to take that policy. But uh, um, but anyway, that that's key. I mean, you know, <laughs> we, we talk about all the time. It's like my wife and I were sitting there talking in the car, you know, like, yeah, you know, hey, it'd be nice to. I don't know, you know, go down the beach. And next thing you know, on her phone pops up, you know, something about, you know, it's a great hotel at the beach. <laughs> so, 
So I was like, you know, they're they're, they're listening. So uh, so you gotta be gotta be careful about that kind of stuff. So anyway. You know, the training for you know for the we do have an online question yeah. um thoughts on data security for cloud storage such as onedrive dropbox google drive parity and immutability with cloud storage versus air gapped backups That, that's a great question. I guess that's a question. Is air gap versus immutability? Is that sort of like comparison one versus the other or combo? We'll just talk about it. <laughs> the the uh, OK, OK, that's what I thought. So the immutability, uh, there's no substitute for that. I mean, that's as good as it gets. So um, what that means is just what I mean, it's your backup solution provides that that capability so that the backup uses a different mechanism than a non immutable one would so it's it's veeam we use you know our our backup application is veeam and there's they've got a, a solution that provides immutability uh, so that essentially makes that impenetrable from the ransomware attack so um, having those offsite with immutability enabled is a, I mean, that's, just, I'd say that's as good as it gets. That's as good as it gets. Uh, now, the first part of that question, yeah, compared to just air gap only. Yeah, if you could combine, combine the two, I mean, you know, I mean, but I would, I would prefer immutability over anything because that's, that's what it does. It locks it down. It's so good, as a matter of fact, that if you try to delete a backup that has been backed up with immutability enabled, you can't do it. You have to wait for that period of time to uh, to elapse before you can you can do anything to backup. So it works very well, especially with with Veeam. And now there was what was that first part of that? Okay, okay. So, and I guess what's what would be the mechanism for securing that? Is that the, yeah? Okay. Um, well, there natively, I would be concerned about it, um, which means I want to look at a solution that can inspect that traffic. And, and look at it and make sure that it is safe. Um, not just, you know, not just a native Dropbox, native Google Drive. I wouldn't, I would be concerned about that. But again, there are solutions out there that can treat that data. It would, uh, you know, on premise or, or whatever, where it's, it's scanning and looking at it and making sure that it's safe. So I would, yeah, so I would combine Whatever you're doing in the cloud, I would combine it with an overlay with something that that's doing more for you. Because we don't know. Now, granted, most cloud providers they have to sign security stuff, and they're doing you know they're they're doing a good job, I would say, at, do, at securing that. But hey, that's my data. Nobody knows. <laughs> I want to make sure that it's taken care of, and and nobody cares more about my data than I do. So. Uh, investing in those those uh, add ons those third party products to help you there. Yeah, OK, so there again, there the these cloud providers are improving their security posture. They're, we're seeing things added on every day, every day, so they're they're recognizing the need uh, to do that, and so they're you know, they're, they want you. They want you to use their stuff. They want you in there, so uh, they're they're providing this stuff, and it's it's getting it's getting better and better and better. Uh, but but yeah, looking at that and and making sure that you have those things enabled. Yeah. Did that did that answer that question? Mm -hmm.
Yes, thank you. Real quick, um, thank you to Stan and Mike and all the Clearwinds teams for time. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thanks, everybody, online for the questions, and hope everyone has a great week. See ya.